In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the threats and the opportunities with inside the Vanguard Invader Detachment from the Tyranids Codex. Now, not only are we going to look at a really, really strong list, but we're going to do a deep dive into how we've constructed that list, our thought processes behind each of the different unit choices. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you how to deploy this army, whether you're going tactical or fixed, and also what your turn one and turn two strategies might look like with this army at the tabletop. So I'm joined with Michael today. How are you doing, Michael? I am well, thank you. Excited to talk about this very intimidating army. So this video that we're showing you now is basically two videos combined together. And this is actually part of an entire module. And there's two more videos part of this module on our Tyranids Masterclass, where we cover every single detachment just like this. But every single module has four videos. The introduction into the detachment, the SWOT analysis, the deployment and term one, and then finally, how to beat the army. So we're giving you these two for free. And if you do like this type of content and you wanna see the rest of this module and also the rest of the masterclass for all the detachments, then do check out the links below and sign up for our masterclass. And we're gonna do this for every single codex that Games Workshop release. So without any further ado, let's see what this detachment can do. So Michael, let's take a look at your Vanguard onslaught list. But let's look at it through the lens of the strengths of the army, some of the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats within the build. Yeah, okay. Now, as we always say, you want to lean into the approach of the detachment. Mm -hmm. We've got that advance in charge, that fallback in charge, that vanguard invader keyword. So what are some of the strengths of this detachment and the units that you'd be using in it? Okay, so it's very mobile. Now, we know that from the fallback, etc., etc. But of course, all of the units with the vanguard invader keyword have at least a 10-inch move. The vast majority, right? Yeah. So our leapers are ten inch move, gargoyles twelve, even the, the you know the flying hive tyrant, lictors move ten. Um, we do have the warriors are probably some of the slower vanguard invaders um, with the primes attached, but, but he, it's very fast. Yeah, because the prime, the wing prime, then just massively increases their movement yeah. anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because you've got the huge base plus two inch uh, coherency, mm -hmm. he can really drag that unit forward. Yeah. Um, and let's also not forget the classic gene stealer. Of course. And the Patriot that also have those keywords. Yeah, yeah, and they scout eight as well. So they're already further up the board. Yeah. yeah. So again, very, very fast mobile army. Yeah. Um, but typically when we see a fast mobile army, mm. that's also paired well with not being so durable. Mm. So would you say that the army is, that's true, that there is a bit of a weakness to the army, is that it's sort of lack of durability? Uh, yes, I would say the overarching... Um, theme of the army is that it is not particularly durable. Yeah, uh, that's right. But it does have some built-in mitigations there, um, like lone operative. Yeah, which will be some of the opportunities with inside the book, right? Yeah. yeah. But if we look at just those units alone, like Tyranid Warriors, mm -hmm. they're like a four-up save. Yeah. No real invulnerable, few wounds each, not massively tough. Yeah. Like the Leapers, again, they're okay, but they're not massively durable, are they? Gargoyles no. certainly die fast. Absolutely. Um, and then it's just whether how many other the big monsters that you bring in, like the Malaceptors yes, yes. and those other huge and, creatures. And that's an opportunity, really, isn't it, to try and fill that gap, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's take a look, then, at some of the opportunities. But before we do that, is the build typically more melee-focused or is it more shooting-based? So I would say melee-focused, right? You know, the le you lean into the detachment, Charge and advance and charge, fall back and charge. Great. So your your melee units are, are very good. Yeah. Um, they can go wherever they like, uh, and if they get bogged down, it doesn't matter. They can retreat. They can charge again. Um, however, you do have the opportunity to run, you know, shooting units in there. Your melee is not incredible. I wouldn't say uh, it's not like it. It doesn't compare to anything like world eaters, or anything like that. You know, the melee is good, but it's not fantastic. Yeah, I would say the melee output is more surgical mm. rather than just like an absolute brute force. Yes. Where absolutely. you need to really use your mobility to pick your targets yeah. off. Yeah. I need to maybe, which to some extent offsets the mobility of the army mm -hmm. if you need to reach those units that you need to prey yes. on. It's about understanding your opponent's unit's defense mm -hmm. and whether you can move in and kill them and then hopefully, you know, use your movement and your charges yeah. to wrap other units, stop them from falling 100%. back move blocking but i think yeah if a, one of your units goes head to head mm -hmm. with another combat unit like more of a bully castle style army yeah it's probably going to lose that fight yeah yeah so absolutely you know strength mobility 
army focuses more on combat, but I wouldn't add combat to their strengths. Yeah. Um, it's not good enough, I think, to, to be a strength of the army. No, I would agree with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, so real surgical strike army, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at some of the opportunities then that okay. we have to offset some of the weaknesses because we mm. know the shooting isn't amazing. We know the combat isn't amazing. So damage output is overall down. Yeah. Durability is overall down. But I think one strength we didn't talk about is its potential to play the mission. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's and, massive. And I think for tactical... This army does incredibly well. Yes. But also, so does fixed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Any of those eligibility to shoot, being in different parts of the board, this army absolutely excels at it. Yeah. So we've got great mobility. And also then, when you've got great mobility, it also gives you the, the opportunity, I think, to deny your opponent scoring. Yes. So therefore, that really leans into the strength of the army is mm -hmm. just to be a differential on the scoreboard. Yep. Um, okay, cool. So what are some of the opportunities that we have to then, let's pick, uh, how do we increase the durability of the army? What okay. opportunities do we have? Okay, so a very easy one is something like Venom Thropes. Okay. Um, for those units that can be shot and don't have lone operative, um, potentially your uh, big guys, if you take any, your warriors, of course, making them minus one to hit. They don't have stealth inbuilt. Yeah. Minus one to hit, give them cover. Same with the gargoyles to keep them alive as well. Yeah, because there is a, quite a lot of infantry on the table. There is, yes. So it will get the minus one to hit and also the benefits of cover. Yes. Um, and then that's going to pair really, really well to things like your Von Ryan's Leapers, yeah. which do have stealth inbuilt. Yeah. Same with all the Lictors that you could run in this attachment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like your entire army's minus one to hit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, really, yeah. really like that. Any other things, any sort of stratagems, enhancements that really help offset that kind of... Um, yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, we, get, do, take... we, we do absolutely have some support from the enhancements and uh, the stratagems themselves. Let's take a look at the enhancements. Okay, so we've got um, uh, one of the enhancements, Chameleonic, which gives the bearers units cover. Okay. Okay, so maybe you don't even need the Venom Throat in that case. Yeah. Um, if you're happy with the bearers units just having cover. And of course, it would be all the time. You wouldn't have to stay within range of the Venom Throats. Yeah. So that's a nice uh, cheeky little enhancement there. But again, that can go on any unit or Vanguard Invader. So that is Vanguard Invader. All of the enhancements, uh, well, two of the enhancements are Vanguard Invader only. Okay. Yeah. Because I really like that one on the Winged Hive Tyrant. Mm. So that no matter where it is, it's always going to be getting the benefits of cover. Yeah, very nice. Uh, if it wants to deep strike down, maybe it wants to rapid ingress. So yeah, that's for me, like that rapid ingress, having that cover works mm. really, really well with that yeah. type of model. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Awesome. And then in terms of the stratagems, we've actually got one called Unseen Lurkers. And this is one CP. It's a strategic ploy, and you choose a Vanguard Invader unit from your army after your opponent's selected shooting targets. Okay. And then if they if they don't have lone operative, they essentially gain lone operative. As a unit? As a unit. That's strong. Super strong. And if they do have lone operative, then they essentially reduce the range you can target them to six inches. Okay. So if you've got um, a Lictor, for example, um, you would only be able to target them over within six inches rather than the 12. And that all of a sudden starts to put those units into threat range of the rest of your army. Yeah. If they're I, getting within six inches, right? You can't get better durability than just not being shot. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, being able to play that on your uh, Tyranid Warriors, your hi Tyranid Hive... Tyrant? Tyrant. I keep calling them Flyrants because that's what we always called them. Yeah. Um, so your Flying Hive Tyrant, uh, even your Gargoyles with their OC and their incredible movement. Uh, yeah, so incredible stratagem. You're probably playing it five times a game. I think you really are, and especially if you have a more cagey play style, yeah. where you're feeding these units out, relying on that stratagem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can be very, very difficult for a shooting army to counter this one. Yeah, There is another enhancement that I want us to look at. Okay. Because I think this is one of the strongest redeploys in the game. Yes. And this is a great way to mitigate some of that kind of, uh, yeah, worry about being alpha strike by your opponent. So what is the enhancement saying? What's it called? Okay, so Neuronode. So any Tyranids model, that's yeah. great, fantastic. Uh, after both players have deployed their armies and determined who's taking the first turn. That's different. That is different. There's not many wording which specifies after who's going first, because most of them would have to be redeployed mm -hmm. in the deployment step of the yes. game. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So this one, now we can redeploy three Vanguard Invader units. Yeah. Okay, or we can put them in strategic reserves without it costing points. Yeah. I mean, that's great. I mean, you could start to put your Von Ryan's Leapers 
out in the open, yep. nine inches away from me. Yep. And then if you go first, you're like, great, I've got an easy charge. Yep. And if you don't like it, you could just pop them back behind this building or something uh, and play super defensively. Yeah, very cool. Alternatively, you could def uh, set up defensively mm -hmm. and then redeploy really aggressively. Yeah. Um, and I really like that. So this was very similar to how I used to play my Aldari mm -hmm. or my Craftwood Eldar back in ninth edition. I'd have three units set up to be offensive, yes. three defensive. Mm -hmm. So if I go first, I can switch my three defensive to being another three offensive. Yep. So I've got six, six offensive units. Yep. Or I can, if I go second, I can pull my units that are offensive back and then get them out of danger as well. So yeah, I think nice. this is a really strong enhancement and it's a great incredible. opportunity to counter some of your opponent's turn one threats. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, and you know, the fact that you can use it on your Flying Hive Tyrant, uh, your big Warrior Bricks, in addition to your infiltrating units and still infiltrate, amazing. And the other great thing about that is that it actually happens after your opponent's got redeployed. Yeah. So you can see where they've redeployed and then you can obviously do yours. So um, I think that's really, really strong and something that I think should be essential in every single Vanguard detachment. Oh yeah, you auto take that. That is the first thing you, you put down, however many points it costs, straight into your, like, your list. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Any other opportunities to increase our defense with this list? Um, so, you know, beyond the enhancement that also gives you stealth as well as the benefits of cover. I think I don't think I mentioned that, Yeah. Um, but fantastic. Uh, you do have uh, one called Hypersensory Cilia. Uh, it is two CP, so it's very expensive, but it does allow you to move with two Vanguard Invader units if your opponent moves close to you. Yes. So this, you might say, oh, that's not a defensive stratagem, but actually that can be an incredibly powerful defensive stratagem. If you've got leapers out in the open, you can now just move them. And it's a full six inches as well. Yep. There's no roll required. So you can just move straight back into the building. I think that's really good. Or it's one normal Tyranid unit, isn't it? That's right. Or one normal Tyranid unit. Uh, is there any battle tactic stratagems? So the only battle tactics you've got are um, one for plus one to hit, and then if they fail a Battleshock test, plus one to wound as well. So okay. you can trigger a Battleshock test, and that's in the shooting or fight phase. Uh, and then you've also got one for precision on your melee attacks. Okay, they're not too bad. Tactic. They're not too bad. Um, I don't know that you they're quite situational. I think the best one for it is probably the um, plus one to hit one. Yes. Yeah, using that on a Warrior Prime unit. It does have to be a Vanguard Invader. Yeah. Um, so using that on one of those units really, really helps their output. Yeah, I could see, for example, the Winged Hive Tyrant giving him precision. That might help him just yep. focus on those key characters. Absolutely, yeah. And then hopefully the rest of the unit won't kill him. Then he's still in combat with them. Yes. They move away. He could then move back and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think there's some really cool synergies there. Um, so on the whole, we've got some stratagems to in and enhancements to increase our durability. Yes. You've already said plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Mm -hmm. Great at helping our damage because we know that slightly yeah. lacks. Yeah. Any other enhancements or, you know, for example, stratagems you think have real play with this army that you're going to be leaning into and using? Yeah, absolutely. So probably the best stratagem available to them is um, Invisible Hunter. Okay. This allows you to put up to two Vanguard Invader units back into reserves. Right. And then you can bring them on later. Okay, you can take one Tyranid Infantry unit instead. Okay. Um, but I think most of the time you're probably picking up your Lone Operative Lictors, your Neuro Lictors, and then bringing them back down to do all your tactical mission cards. I mean, that, again, that just strengthens what was already a strength of the army, yes. uh, which is obviously their great mission play. Mm -hmm. And of course, Raveners actually have that rule they anyway. Do, yes. Now, Raveners don't actually have the Vanguard Invader, uh, no. invader keyword, but they still provide, I feel like, a similar role. Mm -hmm. um, so it does mean if you took some, you know, Ravenous, you might not need yeah. to use this stratagem. Yeah, absolutely. And instead you could use those for your mission play. You've got to think about your CP economy, right? Yeah. And whether you take Swarm Lord or not. And it sounds like we could probably get away without him in this detachment. Yeah, there's a lot of 1 CP strats that are very good. But so, it yeah. all depends, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So what do we think in regards to the threats to this army? What are one of the biggest counters to this one that somebody really needs to look out for if you're using this Tyranid army? Any infiltrating units. Okay. Because obviously this army is full of them, so the best way to counter it would be to have your own. So you need to, as soon as you see the lists, try and identify your opponent's infiltrating units because it can completely mess up your normal routine and game plan with the army. And that first roll off to be the attacker or defender is yes. going to be key. So if you are playing against the Tyranids mm -hmm. or you are the Tyranid, you are looking for that first drop Yep. You want to put your foothold down of your infiltrators, and then whether that's to stop the Tyranid player mm -hmm. getting the objective they want, or alternatively ensuring you get the one you want, yeah. that's the decision for you to make. But um, 
Okay, cool. So that's certainly a threat, and there's not really much you can do to counter that, is there? No, unfortunately not, except by winning that roll off. I think just be very practiced in where your like your areas of the center of the board. When we look at the top down, uh, we can see that we've essentially got three areas we can control yeah. with an infiltrating unit. So you need to um, uh, work out which one's the highest priority to you. And if that gets taken away from you because your opponents deployed infiltrators first, what's your second highest priority? And then you need to go there um, with your other unit with yeah. your first uh, drop. I agree. And also what you can do is because you know you've got that redeploy, mm -hmm. you can be really aggressive with the biggest unit that you've got. Yes. So the biggest unit in, of infiltrators that we have in the list that has the largest footprint is mm -hmm. going to be the Von Ryan's Leapers. That's right. Yes. And what I would do with them is measure out nine inches. So if we've decided we wanted this corner of the table, yeah. we measure nine inches from the edge. We cool. place our first model. Just using these uh, warriors because they've got the right base. Yeah, leapers. and we're literally going to string these out as far as we possibly can, that two inches. Yep. All the way across with our kind of six models, maintaining coherency and ensuring that, you know, we've now covered majority of the table. Yep. Because now we can't set up with a nine here either. So we've said, hey, two thirds of the table, that's the Tyranids. Cool. And of course, you can always redeploy this unit anyway. Yeah, exactly. But if you were to deploy, let's say, Death Leaper there, mm -hmm. you're going to say, hey, I've got a third, Just yeah. and your opponent can have the other two. Yeah. Um, so again, it's really, really crucial, making sure you drop this unit first. Yeah. Okay, great. I mean, that's the only real sort of trick up your sleeve that you've got to counter that. Yeah. What else does this army absolutely hate? High toughness. Okay. It can yeah. be a huge issue for this army. Um, a lot of the Vanguard Invader units really, really struggle into anything that's Toughness 9 or above. Uh, frankly, Toughness 8 even can be a real issue for the army. And you've only got one or two damage weapons. That's right, yeah. yeah. So uh, in addition to that, you know, any damage reduction as well can be really painful. You know, yeah. Your Lictors are damaged too consistently. So any of that high toughness, real problem for the army. There's no real lethal hits available either. No. Uh, so yeah, that's that's another uh, threat to the army. Yeah, the only real ways to get sustained hits mm. is with the obviously the Tyranid Primes. Yeah, but that's kind of helping you do what your army or that unit should already do well at. Yeah, lots of attacks mm -hmm. into little troop units like intercessors, but not great into all of a sudden like you said minus one damage. Yeah, high toughness units. Yeah. In terms of then a play style of an army that you think would be a really good counter to this one, mm. what are you worried about most? So really worried about um, a bully army that revolves around combat. Right. These guys are very um, weak to combat. So any melee, you know, we do have fights first on a lot of units. Yeah. Um, but a Lictor with fights first is going to do nothing to a unit of Custodes. Or 10 Berserkers. Or 10 Berserkers. Yeah. Um, so actually they're very vulnerable to um, aggressive board control melee armies. Yeah, the fight first on the Lictors works really, really well against like MSU, small, you mm -hmm. know, like five Cabalites. Mm -hmm that type of build, but not against, for example, two wound, 10 models. Exactly. You're gonna lose a couple, sure, exactly. if I was a core Berserker unit, yeah. but the rest of my attacks would still have enough to destroy the unit that I wanna charge. Exactly. And I'm also not worried about your lone operator. No. The, no. I think the only opportunity you have is when I get close, is to move back. Yes, yeah, that's the only defense. And when you're playing that matchup, you really need to look at that stratagem because yep. it's gonna really help you against those combat armies compared to any of the other stuff you've got in there. Or moving units forward. Or, yeah, to, to move block and et cetera. To, to stop them charging, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The leapers are the same, um, very good into horde units or, or you know your toughness three that wants to charge you. But again, AP one, one damage, not doing a huge amount of damage. Yep. So your space marines, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. okay, great. Okay, awesome. So we know it's going to be strong into those uh, sort of shooting builds. Mm -hmm. I think stuff like orcs are going to have a horrible time trying to shoot this army out. Yeah. Uh, but a combat orc army might have a lot more um, exactly. speed yeah. and also the fighting power to get through it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, any of those armies that really hate those modifiers to hit yeah. are not going to like it, especially with those lone operatives. And we know this army is going to score well. And I think that's probably the biggest play yes. is understanding how it's going to score. So any other threats to this army that? Uh, yes, OC. OC is a big issue for the army. Lictors are only OC one. Okay. So if you're trying to hold objectives with your lone operatives, expect them to be taken off you. So OC is an issue. Um, fight first is an issue, weirdly, because the army doesn't actually want to charge anything and be killed because it's so uh, weak. Yeah. Um, finally, I would say Overwatch. Yeah. Overwatch is a big issue. If you do want to move block people, um, Overwatch can be a problem, especially with those torrent weapons um, and anything that's relatively high damage. Damage three is very strong against things like leapers. 
Yeah. Because yeah. your units that you're going to be using to move block are the gargoyles. Yes. Maybe the von Rhines, depending on the role that you want them mm -hmm. to have at the battle. But none of those are going to like some torrent weapons, are they? No, not at all. So, Michael, let's take a look at your Vanguard list. All right. So we've got a Hive Tyrant. Uh, and this one has hunting grounds, which um, can potentially make reserves units that you put on the board battle shocked when okay. they come in. Yep. Nice little defensive one there. But also, that is a massive, massive thing. If I want to drop in mm -hmm. within, let's say, three inches within scepters yeah. and deploy a teleport homer, well, now I'm going to be battle shocked. That That's action might big. fail. That's pretty big. That's huge. That's pretty big. And yeah. if you want to take an objective with it as well, yeah. potentially battle shocked. Um, and what is, it, it's quite uh, interesting. You do have to take the battle shock test. So it's not like an automatic. So it's a nice, a nice to have. And yeah. I've got it in the list for that. We've got two Warrior Primes. One of these has the Mirror Node, which is that redeploy. Obviously, it's auto-take. The other one has Stalker for the benefits of cover and stealth uh, on, on his unit. Yeah. Both of those are leading ranged Warriors. So Warriors with ranged weapons. Yeah. These pair quite well with the Hive Tyrant because it gives them Assault. So they can advance and shoot and charge. And fall back and, and shoot. And fall back and shoot and charge. Yeah. So they can do whatever they want for the entire game. Yeah. And what I really, really like is if I want to use the stratagem for um, plus one to hit, it's a battle tactic. So actually the Hive Tyrant can give them both units plus one to hit. And their ranged weapons only hit on fours normally anyway. Yeah. So that's a really nice buff to them both. And then of course it's going to force two battle shock tests on my opponent every turn as well. Which not only does that give me plus one to wound with the shooting, but it also battle shocks enemy units. Yeah. So just any way of just... Throwing in some battleship tests is, is great. That's great. I love him. Him supporting those two units sounds yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's those guys. And then if you make them non-operative, they're still shooting. So they're like protected while still shooting. So yeah. I, I like that little bundle uh, of units there. Then we've got Death Leaper, another character. Um, I've chosen not to make Death Leaper the Warlord because he's a lone operative and he's going to go out and there's potentially army buffs that they might get against Warlords. Yeah. Uh, we've then got two normal Lictors. Uh, well, you can't not really in this detachment. They're very good for mission play. They can go off the board, come back on with the strap. Yeah. I've got two battle line units of 10 gargoyles. Now, if you've watched the unending swarm detachment breakdown, uh, you'll know how good these are. But these guys with advance and charge now and advance and shoot because they've got assault weapons, their potential to tie up shooting armies is incredible. Yeah. Um, bog down vehicles. Bog down vehicles. Yeah. Anything that just can't hit well in combat. And they're OC too. Yeah. So they're kind of like my opportunity to cover the OC problems yeah. that some of these other Vanguard units have. And of course, you can put them in the sky, come back down with two units, and they deep strike. Yeah, great. Um, which is fantastic. Uh, then we've got one unit of Venom Thropes. Okay. And actually, these guys aren't to buff the Vanguard Invaders. They're here to buff my other opportunistic choice, which is two Maliceptors and a Tyrannifex. Okay. Right. And the Tyrannifex has the Rupture Cannon. Uh, expensive, but... I feel like I need something that can crack something like a transport or really do some big damage and the Maliceptors also. Because if you can't shoot it because it's lone operative, I'd rather it be something incredibly tough that you don't want to shoot it anyway. Or if it's a combat army mm -hmm. and it's getting within close, you've got the fight first yep. on, for example, the Leapers. Mm -hmm. But now this unit, the Maliceptors specifically, are going to make that unit minus one to yep. hit. Yep. Minus one to wound. Yep. Um, you know, the, I love that winged hive tyrant. He makes minus one attack as well. Yeah, nice. You start to apply these three combat mm. debuffs on your unit and you've got five first. Maybe you can take out some models. Heroically intervene. Do the leapers have heroic intervention? Free heroic intervention on the leapers, yeah. Not to be sniffed at. Um, but one thing I did really, really like, the gargles. What is their inbuilt ability? So they can shoot and then move six inches. This is brilliant. So now you can remove them from the table for one CP. Yep. Deep strike them back on, and then if your opponent hasn't completely screened off that objective, yep. you can shoot and then move on to their objectives with great OC. It's fantastic. It's so fantastic. this army's ability to completely deny your opponent their primary is going to be literally crazy and quite oppressive maybe in some instances. Yes. Yeah. And of course, they've got a huge footprint as well. So if you wanted to deny some of the secondaries, like the behind enemy lines or the deep strikes, yeah. you can really spread this unit out and potentially make it lone operative. For how many points are they, roughly? Uh, 75 points for a unit of gargoyles. They're really good. They're very. I could they're, see three units in I, They're very good. Um, so to finish off the list, I've got two units of six Von Ryan's Leapers. Okay. Um, units of six is ideal because of the footprint that they can cover. Yeah. Uh, and as we've seen, this can set up here and then move 10 inches. Yeah. So if you're dealing with a combat army, you can actually just stand in front of it. Yep. And you've covered a huge base there of potential move blocks. 
Then the next turn you could just do the same thing with gargles, etc, etc. Um, and of course you're taking advantage of that fight first uh, and there's various setups you can do on objectives to take advantage of the, the heroic intervention too. Yeah, great. All right, well that's the list and up next we're going to take a look at whether you play tactical or fixed and then what also the deployment looks like along with that kind of turn one capabilities as well. Mm -hmm. So that's all to come up next. So Michael, let's take a look at the deployment for the Vanguard Onslaught. But before we take a look at that, are you going to be going tactical or fixed, Michael, with this army list? Uh, this army excels, I think, at tactical. So with the scoring potential and the ability to go back into reserves, and with how fast some of these units are, I'm going to commit to tactical, I think. I would yeah. agree. I think you could... It might depend on your opponent. Yeah. Because if you're playing someone... Um, we said that the worst matchup is like a really heavy combat board control army. Then you might not want to do tactical because of maybe certain areas of the board that you need to control. And you might instead go for something like behind enemy lines and maybe engage on all fronts. Yeah. Because actually this is an army that can do engage on all fronts relatively consistently. Uh, and then you actually don't have to play to the centre of the board, with, which you would with teleport home, as you can kind of concede this area of the table and just push the and, flanks. and push the flanks, hold the objectives, get your cards. Because a lot of those sort of bully armies, the mm. ones that really want to castle up in the middle or over three objectives, yeah. they typically don't have a massive footprint. No. So that then makes them really susceptible to behind enemy lines yeah. and then obviously deploy teleport homers. And it will very much depend on the mission as well and the deployment yes. map. And obviously on the Academy, we've, we go over that in every single element and detail on every single mission you know which missions are great for what secondaries yeah. which um primary rules really emphasize secondary play or uh sorry tactical or fix so we cover all of that on the academy so michael um i think you're right that the tactical way is certainly one which you can easily do you draw yeah. engagement fronts you've got it you've yeah. got behind enemy lines you can do it turn one area denial no problem with the redeploys the infiltrating you've got so many different movement tricks at your disposal yeah the world is your oyster to some extent even with the ability to give your attacks precision mm -hmm. gives you the ability to go cool i've got assassinate it's not a problem exactly i only need to put all of my attacks on one character and kill it cool i'll get my assassinate points yeah your biggest problem might be you bring it down yeah quite possibly and i've got all my guns on one side so if it's over here it's over there i've got problems yeah if it's over anywhere over here then you know i'm golden but i think you know even discarding that you, I agree. You've still got some I element agree. of room for manoeuvre. Okay, so let's go over your deployment, starting with the things that are obviously in no man's land. Yes, so if you don't have any infiltrating units, then you're quite realistically looking at a deployment like this. And it's um, pretty terrifying, yeah. This is the entire board. Yeah, covered. And you know what it's going to do turn one? Let me guess, move? Yes, ten inches towards you. I could advance if I wanted to. Why? Let's be honest, it doesn't really matter. The only thing I'm trying to do here is stop you moving. Yeah, and you can absolutely do that, providing you've got literally three inches between this unit and this unit. Yep. Then there's no way I can go, you know, between you. Um, and then you can decide how much infantry unit are crucial in here. Yep. Because you can always pull this to one side, can't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Or if you really wanted to throw away Death Leaper to completely move block the armor, you could. Yep. But you know, you can shift it in that dynamic because there's probably a lot of infantry behind here. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, what do you do? I mean, all I can do is, great, I can kill these, yep. and I will, yep. but to what extent? Yeah, exactly. And this is only 300 points as it stands uh, of death of um, Von Ryan's Leapers. That's a pretty cheap way of stopping your entire opponent's army moving. Yeah. Now, you could do this with just a one unit. Yeah. You could identify a flank that they're particularly strong at, on. In this case, with the way I've deployed, I'll probably try and move block over here because I actually want to go for this objective. Um, and then next turn, you could do the same thing in the same place with the second unit of Leapers. Yeah. Uh, so this is like a... a uh, what's the word? This is a de facto deployment with these guys, but I could use the redeploy to block just one side yeah. instead of both. Like if you're up against World Eaters mm -hmm. and they roll their blood type points, 
and you know that you're going first, but mm -hmm. their blood tithe points triggers at the start of the battle. Yep. Or the start of the battle round, and they've gone, cool, I'm going to advance and charge, and plus two move, you're definitely going to do this. Yes. Because it's going to keep the rest of your army safe. Yeah. Whereas if you know they've got some shooting units, some combat, just block off the combat units, mm -hmm. and then leave the shooting units to kind of do what they want, or advance yeah. and charge and tag them and tie them up from really being effective. Okay, awesome. And I think you've got some really great plays as well, as we've seen before with the other detachment, the Swarm. Yeah. But if you're obviously watching this um, and you haven't watched that one yet, you've got some amazing tricks with the Gargoyles yeah, exactly. that can do something similar. Mm -hmm. And then you can forfeit an even cheaper unit. Yeah. But then you've got to think about your OC, okay? So what definitely, but what's his role over here on the corner? So he is an option for me to either move block the corner of the board or give me an early charge into something or an early game, you know, mission points. He's a lot more survivable than a normal Lictor, so he's a m lot more reliable for getting one of those cards behind enemy lines. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's him. I mean, you can redeploy him to behind objectives. He's probably going to want to be over here, sitting on this objective, because these guys on my left flank are going to want to try and shoot stuff on there. And what have you got you behind there? It. So over here, we've got a Tyrannifex. And what's that doing turn one? So turn one, it's got its rupture cannon. It's literally just going to set itself up to be able to shoot down this line. Now, what I'm going to need to be wary of, of course, is if there's anything that can charge me, because a Tyrannifex is terrible in combat. OK. Uh, so that's what we're here for there. And then we've got two Malaceptors as well. And these are both going to move around. I may advance them if I'm going first, and I don't have a line of sight. Um, but this is essentially a huge amount of range threat projection. And then we have some Venom Thropes, which we'll just keep within six inches of them. Give them cover. Give them cover. A Tyrannifex has a two-up save and his toughness 12, giving it cover as well, is, is pretty bonkers. And then when you start shooting anti-tank weapons at it, I can blank one damage per game. Yep. So, you know, and then it's going to hit back pretty hard with the Rupture Cannon. So right. that, that's the left flank. Yeah. What's in the middle? In the middle, I've actually gone pretty light. Um, so I've gone with the assumption that actually I'm playing against one of those bully armies. Okay. So I don't really want to be engaging in the middle very much. So what I've got is the Gargoyles to potentially sabotage and jump on the objective with the OC. I can block teleport homers by moving uh, and putting a ring around the middle of the board. Yeah, let's show people how that works. So let's get these guys. Because if I've gone fixed mm -hmm. and I have gone for deploy teleport homers, this simple move all of a sudden means I'm not going to be able to do that because what we're going to do is measure out from this centre of the objective mm -hmm. or the middle of the table to six inches to the outside of this base, or the, even the inside of the base, it doesn't really matter. Um, what that means is that I can't end my normal move or advanced move within engagement range of you. So therefore I can, can't actually get within six inches to, um, yeah. Deploy a Homer. Deploy yep. a Homer. Yep. So you're gonna deny me a turn one deploy to Homer, unless I've got some sort of crazy yep. redeploy or something. Yep. But yep. if you know I've gone for fix and I've gone for deploy to Homers, or even cleanse, how can I cleanse this? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be completely impossible because I can't get onto the objective. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they're getting that far because they've got that 12 inch move and then they can advance. And let's say on average, that's a three. So we're going 15 and then we can shoot and move six inches. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to do with these guys. Range 18 means from here, they just have to shoot something that's sticking out like a vehicle or whatever. One model needs uh, to be able one to shoot, model, right? And then they're, they're, they're golden. Yeah. Brilliant. Obviously, we'd need to make sure we coherency, but there we go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love yep. it. And yep. I think this is great. You know, if, if it, that bully army is here, they've got good OC, 10 models. Yeah. You can easily put lots of models on there to exactly. take that objective off the opponent exactly. as well. Uh, we've also got a uh, Lictor behind here. So this is just really to hold this home objective. I'm expecting potentially against the bully army to give that up. Um, and it will stop any three inch deep strikes. It's also lone operative. So against any indirect, I know I'm always holding this objective. Where do you place him to stop a three inch deep strike? So you've got to place him right in the middle of the objective. Right. You've got a 50 mil base, which means you can't hold the objective if you're deep striking three inches away. Yeah. The only thing you've got to be aware of is maybe a unit that can deep strike and then move again. Yeah. And that's about it though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then we've got another unit of gargoyles to essentially feed into the middle. I might even put these in here so that my range, my reach is even higher. Well, you've got to turn. Exactly. And then you don't need to worry about the shooting and moving no. again. You guarantee it because Again, if I've taken deploy teleport homers, you do this, that's another turn, no secondary mm -hmm. scoring. Yeah, exactly. And then they can even go for any of your units that maybe are shooting. These are actually in prime position to take your home objective. Yeah. Because, they're, you know, 12 inch move, uh, they could advance as well and charge, or they could just advance and then shoot and then move on to the objective. Love it. So these guys are pretty good. 
the old Tyranid players. And they also kind of reset up that move block again, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So you were said you were worried about the combat units potentially in here mm -hmm. into your Maliceptors and your Tran effects. Yep. Well, this unit within two simple turns, one to there, yeah. one to here, you can replace this mm -hmm. quite easily by turn two. So yep. if the Lictors go down, replace yep. it, and then this unit, they're never getting out of here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, and then I've gone really heavy on the right-hand side. Um, I've determined that actually, despite the shape of the L, yeah. I can hide my units on there comfortably by using that stratagem that makes me a lone operative. Right, yes. So I'm just gonna throw this unit of warriors out there with their ranged weapons, and I'm gonna dedicate a CP every turn, make sure I've got it, to defend these guys against any shooting. Yeah, so they'll all go out that way. And then we've got a Hive Tyrant here as well, and depending on you know the, the potential fire that's coming back, he might join them. Don't too many warriors there, that's fine. And then we've got another unit of Prime uh, and Warriors. This unit's got Stealth and Cover. Okay. So I've got one unit that I'm protecting with the Lone Operative, yeah. the other unit that's got Stealth and Cover all the time. So as you can see, I've got a really strong push on this right-hand side. I'm pretty confident I can hold it, and the Hive Tyrant actually only really needs to be within 12 inches to do that free battle tactic. Yeah. So both these units can shoot into the middle. I've got firepower over here I can dedicate towards the middle, and I'm looking to just kind of hold this and push the flanks. Yeah. Oh, finally, I do have a Lictrium Reserve. Okay. So this is in Strat Reserve, because they can't Deep Strike, but they can Rapid Ingress for zero command points. Great. So if I see an opportunity to set up um, a tactical objective, uh, then I might well throw the Lictor down for free behind enemy lines turn three um, or turn two somewhere in the midfield. Does the redeploy allow you to place a unit into strategic reserve? Yep, absolutely. So that allows you to potentially put them on the table. Mm -hmm. And if you're going first, yep. then what you can do is put them in strat reserve. Yeah. But if you're going second, you can leave them on the table mm -hmm. and then spend the two CPs, so the one CP yep. for the two units yep. to put it in strategic reserve. That allows it to come on turn one from Deep Strike. Mm -hmm. And you could always rapid ingress it as well, turn yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Which is very strong to have that kind of, and that's where you can see these synergies really come mm. together. But yeah, as predominantly a combat player, I would really struggle if I was playing World Eaters. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm sure that I can break through this wall mm. for the first turn, yeah. and maybe the, you know, the gargoyles in turn two, mm -hmm. but then I'm losing a foothold in the game. Yeah. It, it's going to put a huge amount of pressure on me, and also your list doesn't give up a huge amount of points on kill-based secondaries either. No. no. And I think that is really key, is to make sure you're keeping down the amount of points you're giving up on the kills, yeah. force your opponent to play tactical, mm -hmm. and then just move block them so hard that they really struggle to score. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I think it's really, really key, yeah. Cool. Well, so what have we learned? Well, <laughs> uh, there's an intimidating block of infiltrating units you've got to deal with and that this army really wants to play on the flanks rather than through the middle. Yeah. All right. And I think these are some of these little tricks to be, you know, really worth watching out for. And mm. on the next video and the next lesson, we're going to be covering how to beat this army and some tactics and units you probably want to think about taking, certainly if the meta shifts this way. Uh, and that's going to be coming up in the next lesson. So we really hope you enjoy this video, and you want to. And if you want to see the rest of the videos, which are part of this module, the other two, and most importantly, how to beat this terrifying army, then do check out the masterclass. And we've done this for every single detachment as well as part of our tiered masterclass series. And you can grab your space on the masterclass now.